Men don't get that. Jesus preached the kingdom of God. He preached about reward. He says, if you're faithful in this life, you'll rule over cities. You'll rule with an iron, uh, 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 rod of iron. Preach that to guys. Don't preach strumming harps with fat babies. Preach the kingdom of God suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. Preach courage and guts, walking on water, killing giants with a stone, calling fire down from heaven, living by faith. Preach that to guys. Wake up the mighty men this morning. What would happen in this place if men took the spiritual lead? What would happen in families, your family this morning, men, if you said, I am going to take my place that God has ordained to be the spiritual leader. And I'm going to lead my family to the things of God. That's going to be our number one priority. Instead of the remote control being the most important object in your house, the Bible was the most important object in your house. What would happen in this church? What would happen in this church if men would say, you know what? We're going to become spiritual leaders and we're going to get to church on time. And men are going to sit in the front rows, not the back rows. We're saying, hey, we are going to teach our youth, not the youth teach us. The youth sit in front. Men, where are the manly men, the spiritual leaders in this church? Last night we had the wall. We had about 120 people show up. Great biblical number. But men, where were you? You've got to be the spiritual leaders in this church again. What would happen? What would happen if that happened in this place? Imagine what God could do. Why is it so important for men to take the lead? Here's why. Because boys follow men. And the reason we're losing a younger generation, the reason the churches today have fewer young men than ever before, is because men have become complacent in their spiritual responsibility to lead and the results have been catastrophic we're losing the battle men for the young men's hearts in our churches and in our communities I thank God for praying mothers and grandmothers my wife is a praying mom my mom was a praying mom and a grandma but I want dads I need grandpas who will fight for their family Dads, you need to say to your sons and your daughters, it is my responsibility before God to be the spiritual leader in your life. And I am not here to be your best friend. I am here to be your dad. And come hell or high water, I am going to fight for your soul. I am not going to stand idly by as Satan drags you into the pit of hell. Absolutely no way. I am going to lead you to where you need to go. Jesus never tried to win children so he could win the family. I thank God for phenomenal children's and youth ministries that we have in this place. But Jesus knew that if he could reach men, he would get the family. In families where only moms serve God, 17% of the time the children will follow. But in families where husbands and wives serve God, 93% of the time, children will follow. And that's why Joshua said in Joshua 24, verse 15, as for me and my house, I'm not taking a vote. It is not up for popular opinion. But for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. And you can ask my son Trevor and, and my daughter Lexi how many times it was an option for them to go to church or not. Never. The big bagel. They were here when the church doors were open. And I submit to you, they were pretty normal kids. I thank God that they're both sexually pure. They're, they're not out on Friday nights getting wasted, but they're in love with God and love being in the house of God. Last night at the wall, both of my kids were here praying on Saturday nights for an hour. I thank God for that. Wake up the mighty men this morning. 
You know, there's so much more I have to say, but I got to cut to the chase, guys. Like I haven't been cutting to the chase. I think uh, of what the possibilities would be. Why are you so passionate, Rick? I think I'm passionate because there's two sides. Where we've been isn't working anymore. I thank God for all you women. I thank God for you, your devotion to God, your wanting and your praying for your family to come to Christ. But I don't know why, I don't know where men lost the call to be a spiritual leader in the home and in the church and in the market. Guys, my passion is because we got to see something change. Anybody satisfied where we're at with the society right now? Anybody really content saying, hey, man, we're really hitting the ball? There's got to be something different. There's got to be a revival that comes into America, into our churches like never before. And I could be wrong, but I believe that God is saying to me, Greg, it's going to come through men. It's going to come through men. We're going to ask the band to come back this morning. Worship team. I'm going to take you to a couple of scriptures that, in closing, found in Samuel chapter 10. We talk about the prophet anointing the, the man of God. It says that Samuel took, verse 1, the flask of oil and poured it on Saul's head and kissed him and saying, has God, has not the Lord anointed you leader over his inheritance? And guys, that's your call. The Holy Spirit has put his hand upon you. Oil is the symbol of the Holy Spirit. Has not he anointed you leader over his inheritance? Verse 6 says, and the Spirit of the Lord will come upon you in power. And you will prophesy with them. And you will be changed into a different person. Wow. A different person. What would happen if the Spirit of God came upon you today, men, and you were changed into a different person? Because look at verse 26. Saul also went up to his home accompanied by a band of men, violent men, whose hearts God has touched. And when I read that, I say, oh God, give me a band of men at sunset, full of your spirit and your power. Oh God, give me a band of men whose hearts you have touched. Because here's why, guys. When a man's heart has been touched by God, he'll be a better husband. He'll be a better father. He'll be a better provider. He'll be a better employee. He'll be a better boss. And we need that more than anything else we need is a touch of God upon our life. What would happen on this Father's Day in 2010 if every man in this room said, God, make me a part of a band of men whose hearts have been touched by God. Men, this morning, how long has it been? Since God's touched your heart. How long has it been since you've been touched by a fresh touch of His Spirit upon your life? Because when He touches you and He touches your heart, you can start telling when you're carnal, when you're walking in the flesh and you're not right with Him and things are not right in your marriage and not right in your family. But it all comes back to you and your heart being touched. And I've been praying, oh God, give me in this church men's hearts who've been touched by God. Give me a pastoral staff in this church who will fall on their knees before God and say, God, I need your touch on my life. Give me a band of men who will say, I will go after God with all of my heart. God, I need you, and you alone will I cry out for. You are my source. You're my substance. Give me those kinds of men this morning. Amen. Amen.